Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today is uh, the eighth day of JavaScript in DDCDB23. And in this le lecture, we will be uh, studying what scope in JavaScript is, what are closures, and the strange this keyword in JavaScript. This is a very strange sort of, a very mysterious sort of keyword which is always used in JavaScript. So we'll have some info about that as well. And we'll start with scope. So, what actually scope is? I will call it visibility of your variables or uh, functions in your program. Or, for example, if you have a driving license in Pakistan, so whether or not it is applicable in UAE. So, if it is not uh, applicable in UAE, for example, I will say uh, scope is not there in UAE or it is not visible in UAE. Similarly, if UAE uh, driving license is av available, uh, uh, applicable in Pakistan, we can say it is visible in Pakistan. So, something like that in programming and in JavaScript is called as scope. So, we will uh, start with, if you remember, there are three types of variables. One is uh, with the var keyword and then we have let and const. So, prior to 2015 I guess or the older versions of JavaScript there was only the var keyword and afterwards uh, in ES6 or uh, 6 or 2015 we now have let and const also. So for example I declare a variable this is a page scope.js which I have created just a JavaScript page and this is a blank HTML page. So if I create a variable, for example, if I name something like var mm, name is equal to azmat. So this is because this is in the root of the file, uh, it is known as global variable. This is known as global variable. And any global variable is actually if it is declared with var, it, it becomes part of the window object. So, for example, I have just declared it as name and if I console.log it as window.name, for example. And I open the console. It shows me. It shows me azmat. Though I declared it as or defined it as name is equal to azmat, but and I have uh, console dot log window dot name. It still is showing me this variable. It means any global var variable becomes part of the window object. If it is declared with var, it becomes part of the window object. So any global variable actually is. Uh, window based windows property actually if, if i just console dot log the window for example just the window so you can see th there are these methods and properties here and one of them is name you can see name is as much you, if you run just any function in global space, it actually becomes part of the window object. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I run a function and call it sum, like we have been doing, uh, if I make a function sum and pass two parameters and it will just return a plus b. So, where does this function lie? It is actually uh, window dot sum. If I have to run it, I can call window window dot sum and two and six. But normally the window dot is not <coughs> associated with it. Okay, so we just call it sum. Sum and window dot sum is the same thing. Got it? Mm -hmm. So any global variable, if it is de declared with var or if the function, it becomes part of the window object. 
Yeah. It's not the part of those. Yeah, it is uh, in Node.js, it is probably global something, and in win uh, browser, it is window. It is used by JavaScript, but not part of the It's not part of the mm, I'm not 100% sure about it, but maybe. Uh, ja JavaScript uses window object for anything inside the window. One tab, actually, These single tab. are provided by the browser. Okay, the may maybe. I'm not 100% sure about that, but at least this is the interface. The window object it provides an interface where you can manipulate with the window. Okay, next, <coughs> if I uh, declare a variable with the same variable, for example, um, hobbies, let hobbies is equal to cricket. So it is also a global variable, but it won't be part of the window object. Okay. So I can't run something like window dot hobbies. It will be undefined. But if uh, I run window dot name, so it actually is because it has been declared with bar, it will be uh, available to us. Okay. Ne next we have functions. So functions is just not for uh, uh, repetitive code as we always say. Functions can be even uh, meant to be used for encapsulating uh, s uh, variables. Okay, so functions have their own variables, and that's why it uh, makes its own scope. So, for example, we have a function. Just I will call it a wrapper for now. Function. The name of it is a wrapper, and inside it, whatever is now defined inside this function, it will have its own scope. Just like global scope, which is uh, outside the function, and uh, if I define anything here, it will actually be part of this. So, for example, if I uh, can uh, create another variable, call it uh, name language equals JS. Okay, now if I I'm outside the I'm in the global scope now and I have created a wrapper uh, function and it has a variable called JS. Okay, if I console dot log language, what is going to be the output of this? Hmm? Let's check it. Is not defined. Why? Because function function has its own scope even if we run it for example we haven't yet run this function so whenever a function is created you have to run it as well so if you run it still is not defined it means in the global scope uh, this variable has been defined inside the function because functions have its own scope we are not able to see it from the outside it's just like uh, tainted windows of a car, for example. So you can see outside the car if you are sitting inside the car. So function is the car environment. You can see outside the car, but somebody who is uh, outside the car, they can't peep through the windows of the car. So here, for example, outside the car, we are not able to see this. But if we use console.log here, inside the function, so it is now it will be available inside the function but not outside the function and now we are calling it so now it will show us the js because it is called from this one inside the function it is visible from outside the function it is not got it okay another thing as i said it is just like the uh, glasses of the car so if you are inside the car, you can see people outside, variables declared outside. So do you think this hobbies will be available inside the function? Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir. yes, no. This hobbies is available inside the function or not? For example, if I console.log hobbies here, do you think it will show me cricket? Uh, 
uh, hobbies is declared outside the function and we are console dot logging it inside the function just like we did uh, we uh, console dot logs from outside the language which are declared inside so we, we, can we can access it it is just like the car yes, classes okay the car so if you take the car analogy you are inside the car and you can see um, variables outside the car but if you are outside the car you can't see variables inside, inside the car yes. right so that's the uh, rule actually so you can see variables defined um, outside the function so if we check it we will see cricket output okay that's why uh, we can easily manipulate variables declared outside the function uh, so this is very I mean critical you should uh, for example if I just change hobbies to say hockey now this variable has been changed the the global variable has been changed and it will show us hockey now right and that's why this is uh, uh, I mean uh, people normally don't declare variables outside the uh, or in inside the global scope they are wrap everything inside the function scope so that they can not they don't accidentally or write variables <laughs> or there are clashes in in the variables for example whatever okay is this clear now next uh, if we have two functions in JavaScript we can have nested functions okay we can even pass functions return functions uh, they are called first class objects in JavaScript so function wrapper and if I create a variable here say let age is equal to 20 and if I declare another function and we will call it second wrapper and here I will console dot log each and I will also declare let age is equal to 30 which is in the global scope this is the global scope age now this is a function the wrapper and it is uh, there is a variable let age is equal to 20 ok it's in inside the wrapper and here in the second wrapper I will again declare another age which is equal to 10 now the rule for uh, functions is that you will always have to run them first ok so this is the second wrapper we will first run this second wrapper and uh, the wrapper function so first we will wrap, uh, run the wrapper function also ok now uh, what can be the output of wrapper I mean this is the second wrapper and the console dot log age ok and it is actually console dot logging age so what should be the age output here Ten or twenty or thirty? Hmm? Why? Yeah. We are accessing the global variable. We are accessing the age variable which are declared outside the function. And then three declare. Three declare. In the second paper, it's age, and here we actually console the log. So it's a block scope, that's why it's a, uh, we'll take a 10. Yeah. Okay, so let's explain it. If we just check it on line 20, the um, line 20 wrapper is running. And if we just check it, so it's 10. Yes. Why is it 10? If I comment out 10 here, I'm just console.log age now. So what it, it will be now? 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 
the clear then the function. No, it I have commented this line now. Sort of. But still it will now be twenty. Okay? It's twenty now. And if I even uh, comment this now what will be the output of h the console.log it will be 30 now it's 30 now okay so what does this mean this is known as scope chain scope chain if there are nested functions so wherever is the variable used for example here we are using the age variable now console.log it will check if in its own domain there is a variable called age if there is a variable it will use that so earlier when it was not commented there was it uh, this uh, age variable was available so it used it right but right now it is commented out so it will now go one uh, step up so it will go to the territory of wrapper function so here it will check if there is a variable uh, which is age if it is it will use that so here if we uncomment it it will use it but right now the commented code won't be run so it again will go one level up to the global scope where it will see now that the age has been 30 and it is used uh, uh, there now so this is known as scope chain it will always start with itself if it sees some variable there well and good it will use it otherwise it will go one step up and we can have nested functions inside the nested functions and the same will be the rule okay नीचे से ऊपर ऊपर से उसको विजिबल नहीं होंगे जिस तरह हमने लैंग्वेज को किया था जो फंक्शन में डिफाइन हुआ था तो वो नजर नहीं आ रहा था दैट वाज नॉट विजिबल बट हियर इट विल लुक अप द चेन इज दिस क्लियर नाउ वी विल कम टू स्कोप आई गेस दिस इज क्वाइट इनफ functions can look outside itself for variables those will be accessible but if the same variable is inside the function itself it will first use it okay if it uh, it is found it will be used otherwise it will move up the chain this is known as scope chain next we are going to start using closure and closure is a very famous sort of topic in javascript closures so what actually closures are uh, there can be a lot of uh, definitions but uh, one of them is if you if there are two nested functions we will now just check and if the outer function is run the inner function remembers the variables declared in it so let us do it now for example if i i have two files closure.html and closure.js right here I will uh, do, uh, make two variables. Let me give an example of uh, uh, function. For example, this is namer is a function. Namer is a function, and it has, for example, some whatever. And then we have another nested function which is na named as uh, pre fixer. Rather than it will be namer is fine. And prefix is a it will have a, na a name parameter it will pass a name to it okay maybe and it will pass something like we will call it prefix for now okay prefix and uh, function uh, What should I name it? Maybe we can name it full neighbor. Okay. 
So these are two functions. One is namer, and inside the function there is another uh, function is full namer. Okay. Here I will declare a variable. Say let um, prefix is a variable is equal to, for example, Mister. I will remove this one for now, just for your understanding. Okay, so the there is a function namer, and we have defined a variable inside it, which is now uh, which is called it prefix is equal to Mister, right? Yes. And then there is another function which is full namer, and it is passed a variable, uh, an argument. Sorry. So we will console dot log. Um, prefix dollar sign prefix and space name okay and that's it so this full namer will uh, use for example if i pass a uh, full namer uh, uh, attribute of azmat so the prefix is mr so it will uh, print out mr Mr. Azmat. Like this. Okay. So let's run because we need to run this function, but it has this nested function also. So first we will have to run full namer also. Full namer like this. And um, And this is the going to be the name, for example. So this name is he used here also. So we will. Sorry, we won't call it here, but we will return it. We will return this function. Return the second function will be. Sorry. Here, we will return the full namer function. That's it. We will return the full namer function. Let us recap. This is the main function namer. Okay, let us remove this name for now. It has a variable prefix is equal to Mister. Then we have secondary function which is full namer, and it is passed a uh, an argument. And we are just console dot logging prefix whatever is the prefix here and the name, okay. And now we are not running the function this second function but we will return this function. So what do you think if I run the namer function here, what will be the output of namer function? Just the output. I mean. Hmm? I will call the namer function here like this. So what is going to be the output of this function? Because this function is returning this function, this inner function. Yes. So the output of this function will be also a function. Yes, it will also be a function. So I can assign assign it to some variable, for example, const uh, final namer or whatever. Const final namer is equal to namer. So this function namer actually returns something, and that return is this. Yes, so this is now a variable but actually it is a function also okay. it should now be callable yes, because we are returning the secondary function yes, we actually this variable now will be a function actually so we can call final neighbor like this got it yes. because this was inner function inner function got returned so if the final uh, the first function is run the return value will be a function itself this is that function and now to call it we will use the two brackets and you you can see it ex accepts a parameter so for example if i just name it uh, fark here so what is going to be the output of this 
Mr. Afaq, okay. If I run it again and name her, uh, was seen. It will it will be Mr. Wasim. Okay. If I just uh, console dot log, sorry, uh, open it in the browser. Where were we working? Closures, yeah. Okay, ignore the buttons, okay? And if I just check it, so Mr. Afad, Mr. Wasim. Okay, let's recap. Full neighbor now is a function. If I pass it this parameter, which I had told it to uh, pass while we were defining it inside the function, we are not going. To, uh, we are not passing the MR again and again. We are not going to pass the MR again and again, but we are just passing the name, and it remembers MR every time. This is known as known as closures. This is known as closure effect. This is the function, the wrapping function. This is the inner function. So here we are. For the first time, we are running the namer function. This is that function, the first one. We ran this function and it returned this function because the return value is full namer. This inner function is being returned. So whatever is the output of this function, it is actually a function itself, the inner function. Now the variable is Mr. Uh, the prefix is Mr. Okay. Now we have run it. This function has been run now. And now we are calling the secondary function actually because it is the one which was being returned. So if I just pass it the names and because in this function we have the prefix uh, available, it is still remembering or it is still accessing this prefix which is Mr which is mister. It means that this is a closure actually. This whole function is a closure and this variable is re remembered even if it has been run here. So we can uh, say that this inner function remembers the prefix all the time and that is mister. And this concept is known as closures. We'll make uh, have another example also so that you can understand it well. Is this okay for now? Let us have um, a function, and we will call it um, maybe multiplier for now. Multiplier. Okay. And inside it, we will <coughs> create a variable that uh, by is equal to 2. It will multiply it by 2, right? So let by is equal to 2. Now let us create another function and it will, we will call it say, uh, number num or whatever so num num will have a variable a or b or c or whatever a number actually we can call it n also like this okay so it will uh, console dot log what it will console dot log by multiply by n it will multiply uh, so by is 2 so if a few for example run uh, 3 it will multiply it by 3 uh, sorry uh, 2 multiply by 3 if we uh, use n as 5 so 2 multiply by 5 and so on right <coughs> okay and now the thing is you have to return the secondary function so return num that's it so num actually is a function okay so if this function is run the whole this main function is run what will be the output the output also will be a function because this is a function we are returning so now we will run the function this outer function will be run so const uh, 
आल और टोटल मल्टीप्लायर और वट एवर यू कैन कॉल इट इज इक्वल टू मल्टीप्लायर मल्टी प्लायर सो दिस फंक्शन हैज नाउ बीन रन द आउटर वन ओके द आउटर फंक्शन हैज बीन रन सो द आउटपुट विल बी बिकॉज वी आर रिटर्निंग इट एज अ फंक्शन दिस इज नाउ ऑल्सो अ फंक्शन दिस वेरिएबल इज ऑल्सो अ फंक्शन ओके पहले मल्टी प्लायर मल्टी ओके सो इफ यू रन दिस फंक्शन नाउ द आउटर फंक्शन इट विल रिटर्न दिस वेरिएबल विल बी ऑल्सो फंक्शन बिकॉज इट इज रिटर्निंग द इनर फंक्शन नाउ इफ यू कॉल टोटल मल्टीप्लायर विद अ नंबर से फॉर एग्जाम्पल फाइव सो वट विल बी द आउटपुट हेयर टेन लाइन ट्वेंटी फाइव सो इट इज टेन इफ यू रन दिस फंक्शन अगेन से टोटल मल्टीप्लायर हंड्रेड वट विल इट विल बी टू हंड्रेड वी आर नॉट यूजिंग द टू हेयर सो वट इज इट वेयर फ्रॉम वेयर इज इट कमिंग इट इज कमिंग फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट कॉल ऑफ दिस फंक्शन देर इज दिस वेरिएबल एंड इट द इनर फंक्शन रिमेंबर्स इट दैट्स द कॉन्सेप्ट द फंक्शन हैज बीन रन बट द इनर फंक्शन रिमेंबर्स दैट आई हैव अ वेरिएबल इन माई अपर स्कोप विच इज बाय एंड वेरियल इज टू ओके सो ईच टाइम इफ यू नाउ यूज रन दिस फंक्शन it remembers it because the by has been used in the um, num function and it is multiplying it by this so let us change the function now say for example if i pass some value here multiplier by 2 sorry uh, it is also a num for example now okay so let by is equal to num whatever is passed into it it will become that and basically this step is not important because if something is passed into the parent function it already will be like uh, the closure we have discussed now but for your understanding we are assigning this var variable which is uh, being passed to the main function to the by so that you can understand so if i for example here multiplier here if i pass 2 so uh, it will do the same thing exactly if i now const let us name it doubler what doubler it will double the value okay so if we will call it doubler doubler so we will have the same output something wrong has gone num okay Mm. Let us call it number for now. Ten and twenty. Okay. So it has the same effect. Now, for example, I need a tripler. I mean, here we have this variable as two now. So two is multiplied by the number, so it becomes. Uh, it is doubling it, but if I need a tripler, what can I, I can do? We will run the main function one more time. So const tripler is equal to multi uh, multiplier, and we'll cross three. Okay, three. Now this return value is also a function. This is now a function. So here, if I tripler. Say uh, seven. So what will be the output? Twenty-one. We are not passing three again. Why? Because of the closures. We are not passing three again because it remembers it. This function remembers that in my global scope there is a variable. Okay. So this is tripler. Hopefully it will be twenty-one now. And Again, if I call it with some other number, say 11, what will be the output? 33. So you can already see the power. For example, I have a doubler function now, a tripler function now. Maybe there are in your logic there are so many other stuff to do. So 
in order to make that variable um, सब वो तो आपके अपने लॉजिक ऑल डिपेंड्स अपॉन योर ओन लॉजिक ओके बट मेन दिस इज जस्ट द कॉन्सेप्ट एक्चुअली इज दैट द इनर फंक्शन इज रिटर्न एंड इफ यू रन द मेन फंक्शन एंड इट हैज अ वेरिएबल this function remembers that it actually the here you can see the three is remembered here you can see the two is remembered okay that's the concept of closures so we can use closures in uh, many instances maybe let us try again uh, some we will create a function and we will call it uh, whatever let us let us call it abc or me uh, we will call it button clicker this is a function we have three buttons here i already have uh, created them id is equal to btn btn2 btn3 okay so whatever is uh, the function is button clicker and we will pass an id into it okay hash id so mm, we call it id here we will we want to have a um, count variable so what we can do let count is equal to 0 let count is equal to 0 and we we want to select the id which has been passed here so it will be say let btn equals document dot get element by id so whatever the id is we will select that that's it so btn is this now uh, <coughs> btn dot sorry btn dot add event listener it is going to be click and the click will have a function which will do something There is something missing still. Okay. Function. Is there anything missing? No sir. Okay. So begin dot add event listener click and it will run a function and that function will actually increment the value of count. Okay. So what we can do is count plus plus. why is this uh, uh, we are accessing it directly because this is a function and it can access its uh, parent uh, scope count okay count plus plus and we will console sorry not console but this dot text content is equal to let us use this you clicked me dollar sign Uh, count times is this okay okay <coughs> now this is a function it will accept a parameter which is the id of the html attribute and we will uh, target that id and store it into the btn and btn will have an add event listener when it is clicked the count will be count plus plus means count is equal to count plus 1 okay and this dot content uh, there is, uh, is this are con uh, text content means this button we will have the second part of this lecture is about this so you will understand what it is but for now will this dot text content means this button you click me count times count is the parent scope variables and this is just a function now as you know you need to run the function this function should be run so button clicker and if we pass it btn1 because in html we have 
uh, in HTML we have these three buttons BDN1, BDN2, BDN3. Let us call this function three times. This is BDN2 and this is BDN3. All right. So if I hopefully it will be working. If not, we will check. So you click me one times, two times, three times, right? And here you click me one time, two times, three times. Each one of these buttons have their own closure. You can call it closure now. Each one of these buttons have their own closures. Closure, closure is a variable actually in the main parent scope. So just with one function, this is the main function, okay? Yes. Then we have this count variable and each time this function is run, it will create its own closure. And this count variable will be only limited to this one and this one and this one. So, so in each click, in the second click, that's the question actually. You just have to think about this. If I click on this, from where does this inner function uh, know that I have my count as 4 and it will be 5 now? Where is it? It is because of the closure. It remembers its parent variable. This count variable is, this count variable is remembered by this function actually, when this function is run. Okay? So the closure is basically the re remembrance of the value in the parent scope when the child functions are run. So here, all of them have their own closures and they remember the value absolutely fine. So is this okay? Good. Now let us come to the most important part of this lecture which is this. This is very very confusing thing and again we will start with, I will just uh, console in the global scope, okay. In the global scope if I console dot log this, just this, what do you expect? You are right, the window object, okay? So if the, in the global scope you just uh, run this or use this, this dot something, this dot, it, it would mean the window object, okay? In the global scope, there is nothing else, so this is equal to window actually. If you just window, uh, window, okay? So this is there are functions, let us uh, uh, first do those two functions because they are used. They are very famous function, one is set timeout and uh, another one is set interval. Set timeout and set interval. Okay, set interval is a function and it will have a function, the first parameter is a function and the second one is milliseconds. So for example this, 1000 means 1 second, 2000 means 2 seconds. So if I just run set interval some function, okay. So in this function I will for example console.log say uh, hello after two seconds. So set interval is a global function which is uh, which means window dot set interval or just set interval okay. So it is a function and 
console.log hello after 2 seconds and this. So, if I now open the console, you can see after 2 seconds, hello after 2 seconds is printed automatically. After 2 seconds, it is uh, sort of looping. Okay. So, what is set interval function? It actually sets a function, uh, a function is passed to it and the, the code inside this function will run each time this number of milliseconds is passed. Okay. Similarly, we have set timeout. Set timeout is also the same, but what is the difference between the two? It will run only one time. Exactly. So, it will only run one time after this number of seconds. So, you can see it has just run if I refresh the page, after 2 seconds, it will run and show whatever it is. Okay? Interval loops after 2 seconds, it also runs after 2 seconds, the time interval, but stops there. So, for example, if you need to create a div after 2 seconds or whatever, you can um, call set timeout and inside this function, which is passed to it, you can run any code in it. Okay? Exactly. Or a API. Exactly. Okay. Now, let us create, I will create two objects. Okay. I will create two objects. So, const obj one is equal to object literals I mean simple obj1 is equal to name is, uh, is um, Kazmat last name is Shah and a function full namer it will console.log Hmm. The big text. So, this dollar sign. My full name is name plus last name. Okay. So my name, uh, my full name is dollar sign this. Uh, this dot name plus. My full name is this dot name plus or uh, not plus but just the space and dollar sign this dot last name. Okay. So we have this object of BJ1. The name is this, last name is this, and full name is this, namer is this. Okay. Now if I uh, I have to run this function, what I will do? OBJ one dot full namer. So, what the output of this will be? Uh, my name is Azmat Shah. My name is Azmat Shah. Okay? Is this clear? If I just uh, also at the end I just use this also. Okay? This. So, now it will return the object which is this object whatever is the object ok so let us recap if I run the this in outside the object in the global space what it will be it will be window but if I run it inside a function in an object another object it will be this object actually Reference to object object. So if we use this in the scope, so it will reference to its parent. If we uh, use uh, inside the global scope, so it will reference to the window object. Yeah. So 
if I use it inside the object, it will be this object. Similarly, in the classes, it will mean the objects created of those classes. Now, let me create another object which is obj2 is equal to const obj2 equals another literal object okay object literal name is equal to uh, park and last name is equal to Khan for example and I will leave it here I don't want this function this object to have this full neighbor function okay yes. I don't want this function this object to have uh, uh, this function but for some reasons for some reasons I want uh, this function uh, full neighbor to be used by this object also okay I want this object to use this full namer function also. So in that case, if I use it here, what should be the output? Yeah. So what one way is, for example, this is, I will just copy this function here. And if I run it obj2 dot full namer, so it will be of Khan, but I don't for some reason I don't want this copying I just want to use this objects obj once function here so what we can do yeah good but for now let us uh, just make it simple so for example obj1 dot j1 dot full namer this is full namer okay obj1 dot full namer if I call it if I use two bracket brackets what does it mean it will call it but if I don't use it what does this mean it will actually this is a reference actually so for example if I assign it to some function const uh, borrowed borrowed full namer for example is the function name is equal to obj1 dot this okay so I have now borrowed this function obj1 dot full namer into the global scope borrowed full name so it's actually is now a function and if I now borrowed if I run it what will be the outcome hmm? No, I have just run it now. So my name is, let us see, my name is what, okay? The last line, line, line 17. My name is undefined. Why? Because it is now run in the context of this uh, uh, window as the uh, object. Outside. 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 Now this, now this uh, full name, this dot name, it doesn't see what is this dot name and this dot last name. Its parent is window right now. Its parent is not right now window, Shabas. So that's why if we run now run it. Obj one dot full name means we are uh, copying this function sort of into this variable. Now this variable is a function, and if we run it we are getting undefined values because name and uh, yeah and also for example if I now uh, define something like uh, name is equal to var name is equal to sha and last var last name is equal to Ulla, for example. Now, why is it showing my? Uh, because now the variables are present, and this is being run in the main um, window context. 
okay so now there is no undefined and shaola is being run okay but not i don't want this function to run here i don't want this new function to run here i want it to run in the context of obj2 in the context of obj2 so what i will do i will call uh, this is the function name so borrow full name dot call dot call and call in the context of obj2 what it means now run this function for me but not in the window context just like we did here but in the context of here obj2 so what it means it means we have a function here somewhere for example this now it will take name and last name as afaq and khan hopefully so my name is afaq khan because we have made this function to run inside the context of this object so this is known as the famous call call function okay so what call does call takes a function to be run in a specific environment in a specific object okay so that's why we call it call functions so call is if there is a function we can uh dot call it and pass the object so it will run in inside this object now and here the function is this dot name so this dot name will be of fuck and the, this dot last name will be khan we can also directly call this function the full namer we can directly call this function to be called in this context so again if i comment this one out if i comment this one out how can we do it obj1 dot full namer obj1 dot full namer dot call obj2 so you can even in english uh, one i'm not running this this is a confusion for many new guys in javascript if i run obj1 dot full name it will run the function i don't want the function to be run yes, i just want the name of this function it means obj1 dot full name full namer dot call call it where on object 2 in the context of object 2 the definition of that function and make a copy for ourselves to run exactly just the definition it needs and it then runs it in this environment okay so we can do here like this same to same only we can run here yeah yeah it give a lot of ways so similarly we have the apply method so obj1 dot full name mer dot apply but here the parameters this the only difference is parameters the dot apply accepts arrays and call uh, uh, accepts uh, just the uh, so for example we need something like uh, here the full namer has a um, variable call um, prefix for example okay prefix 1 and prefix 2 it accepts two parameters okay <coughs> prefix is i two or maybe um we can we can make it suffix prefix and suffix okay so prefix will be added to the start and suffix is added to the last so we will add it here uh, sorry it is dollar sign three fix and at the end we will have dollar sign suffix
now if i have to name uh, run the full namer function i will have to pass two arguments the first one and the second one okay yes. so here in obj sorry uh, the call function this one i will have two additional parameters so for example haji and in end i will have sahib okay so now obj1 dot full name dot call obj2 haji sahib so what will be the output of this haji afa khan sahib on line 26 haji my full name is afa khan sahib okay got it we have two parameters so one in, of them is the prefix the other one is suffix so call except any additional uh, parameters to the call function other than the first one will be uh, <coughs> uh yeah any extra parameters will be added as parameters in this order prefix and suffix so apply is exactly the same but the parameters are passed inside an array inside an array rather than the individual object so here it will be haji and another one will be sahib and this so call and apply are normally if you just google call javascript so you will see apply written with it so call and apply are very famous javascript methods the only difference is if you have to pass the variables individually so they are uh, passed like this and the function is called and if you have to uh, use the apply method here it will have the uh, variable passed as um, in an array now the third one is bind and this is the most famous one of the three bind function which you already have used in one of the assignments so bind is exactly the same bind so for example if you have to run if i have to run this function let us create a an example of uh, again a button but with a class so let us have a class mm, button clicker and it will it will have a constructor this dot count let the count be 0 for start we want the buttons have to have a count and whatever element is passed to it it will create that element for us so for example this dot btn is equal to uh lm element or whatever so document dot get maybe this is by id so lm so whatever is the element of the constructor so here for example if we uh, create mm, const btn one is equal to new button clicker and it will have a uh, id so for example if the html id of it is btn1 so it will create that for us like this now this fun uh, class will have say um, in it for example in it we will call it in it is a function method will and here we have another method which is increment okay These are two functions. Here we will run the logic of clicking the button. So this is now the button. 
this dot btn dot um, add event listener right this are btn dot add event listener so here we will have a function sorry click and then comma then the function like this is this clear okay so in it is a fun, uh, method in it we will have a, th this button which is once clicked uh, we are uh, going to run this function and inside this function what we can do is uh, we will run the increment function and in the increment function we will this dot count plus plus what does this mean it will raise this by one okay okay now what do we mean by this we already have uh, a class on uh, object oriented javascript and this means the instance of this class so whatever is this dot count means this uh, the instance of this class will have a variable called count so this dot here this means this class the object of this class okay this 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 but here the init function has this dot btn dot add event listener so this there is a uh, rule in the this uh, determining the this of a object if something is to the left of it it means that this means that left item so this dot this dot here we have btn dot this so the this here will be this btn not the class and we will prove it why so if this dot btn dot add event listener is clicked we will function we will make uh, for example what we will run this dot increment this is a function method which we will run when the init is clicked uh, run this function will be uh, run and this function basically will increment the value of this variable okay so do you think this will be working why this refers to the btn let us just console dot log it first console dot log this this is the first one and before this when the init function is run we will console dot log this here also here as well just for your understanding okay so this is init function first we are uh, console dot logging this and then inside the uh, add event listener of the function uh, the uh, callback function we again are console dot logging this okay two console dot logs and let us run it uh, we can do that there as well and let us do it here so btn one dot init normally there are parameters passed into the function uh, init function so in that case maybe something like this okay so now if we just run it in the browser one of them is 5 and uh, you can see the two consoles uh, sorry the console.logs of this the one, first one is okay let us comment out all the code above it Let us comment this one for now. Okay, this one is the button clicker function which is on the 38 and this one is the button itself which is 40. This is the object, this button clicker, the first one, this. So here we have this available. Here we have this available. If we run this dot increment here, it will be working. Okay. 
but we are actually running the this dot increment and we need to run the increment inside the buttons uh, click event here we have to run it so here this dot increment is not defined because this is the button itself this button and this button doesn't have the increment the increment is on the object that's why we need to tell javascript that he you need to run this function but not as it is now this function should be run in the context of the object not the button that's why this function is uh, passed uh, you can just wrap it inside uh, these so that like this and dot bind and you can call it this this so dot bind function means that you now you need to run this function good, well and good like you were running it before but in the context of the this in this will be this object this object this object means whatever the new object is now if we click the button we have the count running now successfully previously it was not working so that's why the bind is used for changing the this context so we have asked the um, uh, javascript to bind this function to be run in the context of this this class so normally if for example this is a function i will just cut it uh, right now from here doesn't look good so we will name it something like uh, what should we name this function mm. by default to just get um, this problem solved they have invented the arrow function it it has a this function but it doesn't change it it doesn't lose the this context so we will uh, name this function as a uh, main for example for now we will call it main and it will have all the logic of this now it will be easier for you to understand okay so we have a main function now inside this and inside this function we are running this function it can have uh, we can directly use this function also but for now just understand that we need to run this dot increment inside this main function so once this dot button is clicked we will run main function okay sorry this dot main this dot main will be fun uh, run but dot bind this uh, this dot main sorry this dot main dot bind this so this is a very tricky sort of this dot main bind this but you will get used to it once you know the logic the concept so what now this means i have this function this dot main is this function okay when this is clicked this dot main function but don't run it inside the btn environment bind it to this object environment if you don't use dot bind this it means like it again will be run in the button context so bind this means to run it inside this and we will also uh, so if we just check hopefully it will be working still click main dot bind mm. is this functioning well now mm. 
why is it not working We are not uh, using uh, click is not doing anything right so maybe console dot log this dot count working fine okay okay so what is bind function bind actually uh, yeah so bind actually makes uh, the this changed for a, a method actually so previously it was run in the context of this button now it is being run for in the context of this class or object and remember the return value or output of bind is another function okay so it, it is not just like uh, call or reply so if this is run there will be a function whatever it function is it is so once the click happens this function will be run there is one more use case of the bind function okay so for example um, for example there is a function let me just create a function and we will call it uh, um, prefix and suffix will it will have two parameters and let us call it namer again like this so it will console dot log means once this function is run it will console dot log um, prefix plus suffix for example okay and maybe we have a third parameter which is a name the second one uh, so plus name plus suffix if you want to add space what we will do plus and some space this is because concatenation okay the old way of and here as well we will have some space so what this function will do it will have prefix name and suffix so for example if i just call it with namer and uh, mr mr javed and suffix is khan so what will be the output of it mr javed khan just like this okay 
if I run it uh, with uh, some other Mr. Salim Shah. So, Mr. Salim Shah will be run for it. <coughs> but now, for example, I want to function where I don't um, Mr. is repeated. So, I don't want uh, to repeat Mr. for example. I don't want to re uh, repeat Mr. So, what I can do is I can fix this parameter for a function. So I don't have to pass this again and again. The Mr. to uh, pass to the function again and again while I'm calling it. So I will, this is a namer function. I will uh, do something like uh, namer dot bind and, and the return value of this will be a function. So let us uh, uh, const new uh, namer is equal to namer dot bind the first parameter will be because I am not going to bind it to any object or anything like that like we previously did like uh, the this or uh, obj2 or whatever so we don't wa want to bind it to any object so we will pass null to it but here we will pass mister now the magic is this is a new function new namer new namer is now a function which can be run but now how many parameters I need to have it to, to which ones Javed and then uh, last one is Khan Mr. Javed Khan this is also kind of like uh, closures because it remembers the uh, name let us change it to this so you can see mister with those though we haven't passed the mister parameter but those values are, have been printed out for us so what how were we able to achieve it you have a normal function it can be inside an object also whatever for example obj2 dot name or whatever so you will have to uh, get that uh, function name with the bind and then null null means we don't want to have it run against any other object so and the second uh, parameter will be this one so const new namer is this and then you can just um, run those new functions so today we uh, covered scopes closures closure is where the variable in the parent scope is remembered by the inner functions and then we went on to use what this actually is okay so this in uh, um, object is the object itself or the classes and if a button is clicked whatever is to the left side it actually means this so if a button is clicked the uh, uh, this inside the function will be that button okay and if we need to make that function appear as a function of the object so we will have to bind it with this okay one more thing uh, we have used the bind keyword here uh, the bind uh, function method actually and we are able to bind this uh, click handler to the main object but one of the ways and in modern JavaScript if you don't you want to use this dot bind what we can do is we can make this main function as the uh, arrow function so, so for example this is how the arrow function is and we will assign it to some uh, variable so for example main is equal to this so now this is an arrow function and what the main uh, concern of the arrow function is that it doesn't lose the this context so whatever is the this here we don't need to even if it is now uh, used as 
a callback function we just don't need to use this bind hopefully they will still be working we use this dot main let us try if it still works so you can see just because of using the uh, error function we just don't need to have the new this bound to the uh, the function passed to the so hopefully this is clear now and that's all for today what we studied actually was uh, we started with uh, the sc scope where the variables are accessible and then we went, uh, went on to use uh, and study closures and then we used the this keyword thank you very much